Hi, let's talk about the zero interest bearing notes receivable. Before I can talk about the subject, we got to know what the notes receivable are. They are rights to receive a specified amount of cash either on demand, that means now, or at a definite future date. What is a note? A note is a negotiable instrument signed by the maker and received by the payee. If you make a note, you are the maker, and the person or company you give that note to is a payee. There's two types of notes. One is interest-bearing, and the other one is non-interest-bearing. Interest-bearing means on the face of the note, there's a stated rate of interest. Of course, the non-interest-bearing note is the interest rate is not specified or written on the face of the note. What are the reasons for accepting a note? First reason is because you want to extend the credit term to your client or customer. Let's say a customer used to be good and paying his uh, accounts payable to you on time, but now he is having difficulty, so he requests you to extend his credit. So you thought it through, you say, okay, I will convert your accounts receivables to a note receivable, either 90 days or a year or whatever the time you agreed on. Reason is you sell products or services to high risk or new customers, and you don't know how it's going to turn out, so you decide to see how this customer going to work out. So you start out with a note receivable instead of a account receivable. The next reason is to make a loan to employees or subsidiaries. The fourth reason is to sell property, plant, and equipment, and your buyer wants to write you a note unless he or the company has cash to pay you, otherwise it's going to be a note. The last reason that's most often reason is to lend money to borrowers. The lenders often write the notes and uh, lend money to the borrowers. Before I can go and talk about zero interest bearing notes receivable, I got to show you the present value concept. On the screen on the bottom of the table has a present value of a dollar. Now I want to show you what a present value meant. Present value basically is today's value. Now you can see I'm going to show you a dollar a year later is worth 91 cents today, assuming the interest rate is 10%. Now you see my blue arrow on the screen, which means if you give your banker 91 cents today, you say, hey, you pay me 10, a 10% interest rate. A year later, that 91 cents will become a dollar. So that a dollar a year later, today's present value is 91 cents. On the same token, a dollar two years away, present value is 83 cents. Now, a dollar three years away, convert back to today's value, would be 75 cents. A dollar four years later, worth 68 cents today. You can see the present value of an ordinary annuity on top of the table. You can see my arrow pointed at $3.17 or $3.17 as an ordinary annuity of a dollar for four years. What does that mean? Before I can explain to you on this meaning, I need to explain to you what an ordinary annuity is. First, what is an annuity? Annuity is a series of equal cash flows occurring at equal intervals over a period of time, like every year end for four years. An ordinary annuity is an equal end of period cash flows occurring at equal intervals over a period of time. So if the first cash flow occurs at the end of the first year, the annuity is an ordinary annuity. If it happens at the beginning of the first year, and then the annuity is an annuity due. Now, let's explain this $3.17. You can see my green arrow is pointing to that uh, on the lower left-hand corner. You simply add 91 cents and the 83 cents and the 75 cents and 68 cents together. You will get $3.17, which means first year end, $1 convert back to today for 91 cents. The second year end, $1 convert back to today for 83 cents. Third year end, a dollar 
convert back to the day for 75 cents. And the fourth year end, a dollar, convert back to today's value of 68 cents. Therefore, you have totally $3.17. I finally can explain to you what the zero interest bearing node is. Look at my screen here. My example is on January 1, 2012, Big Help Company receives a four-year $10,000 zero interest bearing note. That means the note does not carry a interest rate. But at that time, when this note was issued to you, the market rate is 10%. Now, do you really believe a zero interest bearing note do not have interest? Not really. It has interest. It's a hidden interest. It's what we call a uh, implicit interest. What that means is the discount on the notes receivable is unearned interest. You're not going to earn that interest until later days. So the present value of the note equals the amount of cash you sacrificed. You see my time diagram. Now look at my example on the screen. This company received the note on January 1, 2012 for $10,000. The note does not bear any interest. But the market rate at that date was 10%. So how do you record this transaction? You got to be thinking of two things at this time. First, how much that $10,000 principal amount due in the future worth today? Next, since there is no stated interest rate, how are you going to record this? What's the deal? Let's look at it. On my screen, you see January 1, 2012. You record $6,830. dollars How do we decide that $6,830? Let's take a look. It's $10,000 multiplied by 0 0.683010. On my slide 3, I showed earlier that the table, if you convert one amount from sometime later back to today, it's not an annuity. It is one amount, a single amount. So you use that one conversion rate, which is 0 0.683010, multiplied by your dollar amount, that's $10,000. Therefore, you have $6,830. And let's look at how do we decide the $683 as first year discount amortized. That is $6,830 multiplied by 10%. But what does that mean, discount amortized? Now remember I explained, when you issue a note with no interest stated on the face of the note, which we call zero interest bearing note, actually the interest is hidden in there, just not written on the face. Therefore, on the day the guy or the company issued the note to you, you are only willing to pay the guy or the company less amount than the face amount of $10,000. So your present value of node equals the amount of cash you're willing to sacrifice. In this case, you're only willing to sacrifice $6,830. And four years later, you are going to collect $10,000 back. So that amount of difference $3,170 on the right hand second column represents a discount, represents your unearned interest. Gradually throughout the time, first year end you're going to earn $683, second year end you're going to earn $751, third year end you're going to earn $826, and the fourth year end you're going to earn $910. Totally, you will earn $3,170. And that $3,170 added back to your $6,830 will equal that $10,000. Now, here's how we're going to record them. January 1, 2012, the day you received the note, you will say, well, I increased my notes receivable by $10,000. Therefore, I debit notes receivable or put notes receivable on left hand side. I credit discount on notes receivable on the right hand side, which means I'm not collecting that amount yet, but gradually that $3,170 will become my interest revenue. Also, I'm crediting cash for $6,830. That is the amount that you are willing to sacrifice 
to give to your borrower this point. Now let's see what happened first year in December 31st, 2012. You saying, "Aha! I finally earned $683." So I am acknowledging or recording interest revenue on the right hand side, credit side. Then you are going to say, I'm decreasing my discount on notes receivable. I have recorded back then for $683, which means out of $3,170, you have earned $683 as interest revenue. You do not collect that cash because you did not pay out that cash to your borrower earlier, but that become your revenue. And four years later, you will earn $3,170 as interest revenue. How do we present notes receivable in our balance sheet. Let's take a look. September 30th, 2012. Your notes receivable on your balance sheet on the asset side it says $800,000. Right below there, you said, I have allowances for notes losses, $100,000. Which means you estimate probably you will not collect $100,000 out of this $800,000. Therefore, your net realizable value for your notes receivable is $700,000. That is your carrying amount or the amount recorded in your book at September 30th, 2012. How do we evaluate notes receivable? Let's look at this example. This is almost continuation of the example we just did. Your carrying amount is $700,000, but Three months later, that is December 31, 2012, you realize you now know your fair value is only $500,000. It's no longer $700,000. So you know you suffer a paper loss of $200,000. So how do you record this? So this is the first year you are evaluating your notes receivable. Why do I emphasize this? Because GAP says, if you're going to use fair value option to evaluate your notes receivable, you will have to elect this method in the first year when you recognized your notes receivable. Therefore, this is the year to do it. So at December 31, 2012, your company will record as follows. You debit unrealized holding gain or loss, $200,000. Keep in mind, that's on the left hand side, that's the debit side. Debit side normally you record asset or expenses or losses. Now right hand side you credit notes receivable for $200,000. Some people prefer to use the account called fair value adjustment. Either way it's okay. If you do notes receivable directly then that would offset your left hand side notes receivable account by $200,000 you will not be able to see a regional amount. So personally, I prefer to use this fair value adjustment account. That is a contract asset account would be listed right below your notes receivable account. Please be reminded, if you are having a trading security, then you will record this amount directly to your income statement. That is why I debited the unrealized holding gain or loss hyphen income. That income means this amount goes to income statement. Will increase or decrease, in this case decrease your net income by $200,000. If it is available for sale type security, now we have three type securities. Trading securities, available for sale securities, or hold to maturity securities, which we're not talking about. If this is available for sale security here, then this amount same amount of $200,000 would go into your balance sheet. Under other comprehensive income, that is a separate component in uh, equity section of your balance sheet. Finally, I want to summarize how do we evaluate notes receivable. If we have a short-term notes receivable, that should be reported at net realizable value. It's very similar to your accounts receivable, which means in your balance sheet, you would say notes receivable at a certain amount and then 
Below there, you would record the a contra S account, and then you will have a net realizable amount. If it's a long-term notes receivable, then you would record by cost. But if you record them by cost, FASB requires you to also disclose them in the footnotes. Notes receivable, and you do not elect to use fair value option, then you have to record at a cost, and then also disclose that amount in your footnote. If you do use fair value option, Option, and then you would use your fair value as the basis of measurement for your financial instruments that include your notes receivables in the financial statement. Thank you very much.